Hey everybody, I'm here with uh, Derek C. in France, and uh, you are the director, of course, of Place Beyond the Pines. Really enjoyed this. This the, the thing that was interesting, when I was looking over the press notes, and you had talked about, like, the cast is, is so amazing. But, like, just one little point that I remember thinking was, like, Ray Liotta, and you mentioned, you know, this is a guy from Goodfellas. And in a way, I kind of got that sort of vibe from this film. It felt very sort of, like, epic, going back and forth in periods of time, and, you know, really... Uh, Ambitious, a very ambitious project, and and I guess uh, let's first of all talk about like bringing that cast together and finding all these people. Uh, ben Mendelsohn, so yeah. great, you know. Yeah, well, you know, it's this was really a dream cast for me to work with. You know, when I first sat down with my co-writer Ben Cochio at the Donut Pub in New York City, we agreed on three things early on. We agreed that we would tell this movie; it would be three linear stories told mm -hmm. back to back to back. We wouldn't intercut it. We agreed we'd shoot the film in Schenectady, where he was from, where my wife was from. Uh, it's actually where the title of the movie comes from. Yeah. The Place Beyond the Pines is, uh, the, is Schenectady translated in the Mohawk language. And then uh, uh, I found out that Ben, my co-writer, his favorite movie was Goodfellas, and so was mine. And so we agreed we'd write a role for Ray Liotta. Yeah. And then flash forward five years later, I was sitting in a casting room with Ray and, uh, you know, dreamed dreamed my whole life of sitting with that guy and being with him and making a movie with him. You know, I feel like Ray Liotta's a national treasure. I think uh, I think some days they're going to be putting his name in a mountaintop somewhere, you know? <laughs> and to have him on set is, is just amazing, especially for a filmmaker like me who likes uh, the unexpected, mm -hmm. who likes instigation. I, lo I love actors that can make things happen. Yeah, he's supposed to be really intense. Yeah, you know? yeah and Ray, Ray can unnerve people, yeah. you know? Um, and he definitely did that on, on set, you know, at the dinner table with Rose Byrne and Bradley Cooper. Just the whole room was just on, on quicksand with him. Yeah. And to me, that's great because it's life. And, I, and you know, as, a, as an audience member, I don't like it when I'm reading a script on the screen, when right. the pages are turning. I like it when there's, like, real things happening. And that's, that's what happens with Ray. You put, him, you, you put him in your aquarium and he's like that beta that uh, or you know whatever those those Siamese fighting fish are, mm -hmm. you know. Even though he's a really sweet guy, he's gonna unnerve all the other fish in in the tank. Right, so, and then a guy like Ben Mendelsohn too. Mendelsohn. I mean, he, he's got his own thing going on. He's, yeah. So so he I I kind of equate him as like the new Gary Oldman in yes. a lot of ways. I think yeah, he's like the new Gary Oldman. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I love Gary Oldman too. And I, I met with, uh, you know, I met with Ben. I had only seen Animal Kingdom. I had no yeah. idea that he had been acting since age thirteen and was kind of a, you know, national treasure himself in Australia. And you know, when I first met with him, he was such a wreck. I had never seen an actor come into an audition looking so out of sorts like he did. He had on a plastic uh, wristband, and I couldn't tell if it was from a party or from the hospital. <laughs> um, and uh, and he and he was sitting there, and all he said was, he says, "Oh, mate, you're not going to make me audition for you, are you?" He <laughs> says, "If you make me audition, it's just going to ruin the whole thing." Yeah. He said, "If you cast me, he says, I'll carry a spear for you." Yeah. And uh, I said, "Okay, fine. I believe you. I trust you. You're hired." So after five minutes of knowing him, I knew that I could give him, give him my life, you know, and uh, and to shoot with him is just so 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 amazing, you know. He really brings. That's such an energy to it. You know, that character of Robin was written, to give you an idea of Ben. He was written as this old guy, kind of like a spider that ensnares Ryan Gosling into his web of deceit. And uh, it was more an archetypal, uh, you know, character. And he had like a big mangy junkyard dog, a Rottweiler. And I remember Ben, when he first came to Schenectady, uh, Ben is like the most friendly person, the most you know, he's just a real human being, you know, like he can relate to anybody. And he was, uh, he was in the accounting department with all the people that were doing the accounting for the movie. And in the, account, in the accounting department, they all had little dogs. They all had those little dogs, like George Carlin said, that would shake and pee all the time. <laughs> and, uh, right. and Ben loved these dogs. He would just be, uh, first time I saw him, he was on the floor just covered in little dogs all licking his face, you know. Dogs know, right? They know a good person, right? right. So they loved him. And Ben said, hey, he said, hey, Dad, because he called me Dad. He called, every director he works with, he calls Dad. He said, he, said, he said, I was thinking these little dogs might be more interesting than the big dogs. Yeah. And that choice alone just steered his whole character into, into the direction where it is. And then all of a sudden there was this scene in the movie where, you know, I had like four pages of dialogue. After they robbed their first bank, Ben is 
you know, supposed to be counting the money saying, well, it's not a million dollars yet, but if we do this a few more times, it could be. So we're preparing to do this scene, and Ryan puts on Dancing in the Dark by Bruce Springsteen on the radio. And Ben has his shirt off, and there's these little dogs everywhere and cigarette smoke. And all of a sudden, this moment comes where Ryan and Ben are dancing together with these dogs. And, you know, I nudged my cinematographer to roll, and, you know, we shot that scene, and then we spent the next half of the day shooting the scene that we were there to shoot. But when we got into the edit, it was that moment, you know, that life that Ben was able to create, that Ben and Ryan and those little dogs were able to create. It's all his choices added up into this incredible energy for that character. Yeah, it works so well. Um, it also, you know, you, you and Ryan obviously worked together with Blue Valentine. Coming off of that experience and, and both the positives and the negatives that happened with the, the whole ratings thing and all that, yeah. what was the one thing that maybe you learned and, and brought into this particular project coming out of Blue Valentine? Like in terms of working with Ryan? Well, maybe working with Ryan or just kind of the whole studio process of how things are put together. Yeah, well, I mean, like with, with Blue, it was, I mean, look, I, I had spent 12 years trying to make Blue I know, Valentine. It was a long, germinating project. It was like that rock that Sisyphus pushes up the mountain. And <laughs> everyone in my life thought for so long that, I mean, I started to feel delusional. Yeah. You know what I mean? People are like, how's that movie coming? You know, like people would stop even asking me about it. What are you doing? I'm working on Blue Valentine. They just roll their eyes, you know. So finally, I, to get that burden off my back was, was great. And the fact that the movie had that moderate level of success that it had, um, you know, allowed me to have an opportunity to make another film afterwards. And, you know, in, to choose my next film, you know, I had options. You know, I had, for the first time in my, in my life, I had other options. I had other scripts that were coming to me. Mm -hmm. And I read those other scripts, but then I thought to myself, I needed to go back to the well with this, you know, and make something that was equally personal yeah. as Blue Valentine was. And this was a film I had been writing since before I had made Blue Valentine, you know. I remember Ryan, I was at his agent's house in 2007 and we were having dinner and I asked him, you know, I said, what, you know, what have you done in your life that you haven't done that you've always wanted to do? And he said, well, I always wanted to rob a bank. <laughs> and I said, well, okay. that's crazy. I'm writing a movie about a bank robber. And I said, how would you do it? And he said he'd go into a bank with a helmet on and, you know, because no one would know who he was. And then he'd, he'd leave on the motorcycle and because you know, motorcycles are fast. And, you know, he'd have a U-Haul truck parked about four blocks away and he'd be able to drive into the back of the U-Haul truck and escape in the U-Haul truck because everyone would be looking for a motorcycle, not a U-Haul truck. And I said, that's exactly what I had been writing in my movie, you know. So it felt like destiny, you know what I mean? That we would work together again. You know, we were planning this film since before Blue. Uh, but this film's just a much larger scale, much larger scope than Blue Valentine. So we had mm -hmm. to finish that first and take our steps forward. It makes me think of like a classic, almost like William Friedkin type films and stuff. I really, mm -hmm. really enjoyed the, the structure of it and everything, I think you did a great job. So Thank you. I'm, I'm being told we have to wrap up. I they hate are. this. They're but, giving you this but, thing. Yeah, they're giving me this thing. <laughs> but uh, Terrence and France, thank you so much. Uh, Place Beyond the Pines, it's, it's a really amazing uh, piece of entertainment, and you guys should all check it out. Thank you. Thanks, man. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah, appreciate your time. Yeah.